हेलो गाइस आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग गुड आई एम विशाली की कान एंड वी आर डिस्कसिंग द वीएलएसआई टेक्नोलॉजी इन दैट वी आर डिस्कसिंग द प्रोसेस इंटीग्रेशन टुडे वी आर मूविंग टुवर्ड्स अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वीडियो इन द प्रोसेस इंटीग्रेशन दैट इज द इंटरकनेक्शन फॉर्मेशन वी शुड अंडरस्टैंड हाउ वी आर मेकिंग द इंटरकनेक्शन व्हाट इज द इंटरकनेक्शन डूइंग इंटरकनेक्शन इज गिविंग द रियल वर्ल्ड कनेक्शन टू द गिवन चिप सो द गिवन चिप कैन बी कनेक्टेड टू द रियल वर्ल्ड विद द हेल्प ऑफ द वोल्टेज एंड द करेंट राइट सो वी कैन गिव द वोल्टेज एंड करेंट टू द चिप और वी कैन ऑब्जर्व द वोल्टेज एंड करेंट फ्रॉम द गिवन चिप एंड दिस इज हाउ वी आर गिविंग द पर्टिकुलर फंक्शनैलिटी टू अ गिवन चिप and how we can give and receive the voltage and current with the given chip with the help of the interconnection and this is the reason interconnection formation is a really important process in the process integration and for understanding it you must understand how we were making the transistors and the gate and various other components like the mosfets and the capacitance as well so this is the reason i was saying you have to watch all of the previous videos if you have still not watched them so now let's move towards the interconnection if i talk about the interconnection as a process it is a back end process now the making of transistors or mosfets or the capacitor is a front end process because it is happening on the wafer but the interconnection formation is happening above the wafer it is not give making changes inside the wafer if i am making transistor there would be some changes inside the wafer structure but making the interconnection does not create any changes inside the wafer structure rather it create changes above the wafer so we can have multi layer metal interconnection as well and we can use the dielectrics in between right so this is called the multi layer metallic interconnection what is the advantage of that what is the disadvantage of that we are going to see in this video we can form the local interconnection with the help of silicide for the pre metallic dielectric we can use the dope oxide we can use the phosphosilicate glass or we can use the borophosphosilicate glass we can use the tungsten and the aluminum alloy for the metallization in the aluminum alloy we can use the aluminum silicon alloy or we can use the alloy of aluminum silicon and copper right we all know what are the advantages and disadvantages of using aluminum and its alloys so now for the intermetallic dielectric we can use the undoped silicate glass and the fluoro silicate glass now we are moving towards the copper and the low dielectric constant interconnection why these are better these are the actually technology of the future and we are going to talk about copper and the low dielectric constant interconnections in the next video separately right so now coming to the local interconnection what is local interconnection we know on the given chip we are having millions of the transistors right so millions of the transistors must be getting connected so with the help of interconnections we are actually connecting the transistors if i am connecting two neighboring transistors it is called the local interconnection so the local interconnection is the connection between the neighboring transistors usually polysilicon or the polyside stack is used for the local interconnection right we can use the tungsten silicide titanium silicide cobalt silicide which are most commonly used elements or the compounds for the given local interconnection formation so tungsten silicide can be deposited with the cvd process cvd is a chemical vapor deposition process with the tungsten hexafluoride and the silane right titanium silicide is deposited with the pvd of the titanium of on the silicon and then we can do thermal annealing with the help of thermal annealing titanium will be reacting with the silicon to form the silicide so now coming to the tungsten silicide process you can see first of all we are going to do the wafer cleaning then we are going to grow the gate oxide which is a very thin oxide layer after that we are going to deposit the amorphous silicon you can see we have the gate oxide layer after that we have the amorphous silicon layer you can see after that we have the tungsten silicide deposition here we have the tungsten silicide deposition right so this is represented in this figure okay so this is my p well and over that we have the shallow trench isolation as well after that we we will be having the gate and the local interconnection mask right with the help of photolithography process i can make the mask and then i can etch out the tungsten silicide with the help of fluoride chemistry with the help of fluorine i can etch out the tungsten silicide from this location where i don't need uh, it so here we will be having a protective covering of the photoresist which is protecting the tungsten silicide underneath it but here 
wherever the photoresist is not present the tungsten silicide is etched out with the help of the fluorine chemistry right after that we can etch out the amorphous silicon as well so you can see after etching out the amorphous silicon with the help of chlorine chemistry we are going to etch out the amorphous silicon and then we can strip off the photoresist and this is how our output would be looking like the polysilicon and the silicide annealing is done after that to make the single crystal structure and this is how our tungsten silicide process would be completed so now coming to the self aligned silicide we can use the titanium silicide and the cobalt silicide over here now why we are moving towards the titanium and the cobalt silicide it is having lower resistivity which means it is having higher speed in relation to the tungsten silicide so titanium silicide is used when the gate size is greater than 0.2 micrometer cobalt silicide is used when the gate size is lesser than 0.2 micrometer we can use the metal pvd like the titanium or the cobalt pvd and after that we can do the thermal annealing to form the silicide okay after that we can strip off the unreacted extra metal that is deposited so you can see cobalt self aligned silicide process first of all we are going to deposit the cobalt here we have the side wall spacer right so after that we are going to do the rtp so our rapid thermal processing will be giving me the silicide alloying okay after that we are going to strip off the unreacted cobalt and this is how we will be having the cobalt silicide formation over here this was the required interconnection that we wanted and this is how we had formed it so now coming to the tungsten local interconnection tungsten local interconnection is going to give me lower resistance higher speed and the lesser power consumption all of these are very good advantages so it can be done with the help of damascens process which is similar to the tungsten plug formation so here first of all we are going to etch out the trenches which are in the silicate glass layer okay after that the, with the help of etched out trenches we are going to deposit titanium and the titanium nitride barrier or the addition layer right after that we are going to use the chemical vapor deposition of the tungsten to fill the trenches after that we can use the chemical metallical polishing to remove the extra tungsten from the wafer surface the tungsten left in the trenches is used to form the local interconnection so you can see here first of all we are going to do the cmp of the phosphosilicate glass then we are going to do the wafer cleaning then we can use the local interconnection mask this is the mask that we have after that we are going to etch out the phosphosilicate glass right to make the trenches after that we are going to strip out the photoresist and again we are going to do the wafer cleaning so you can see here we have etched out the phosphosilicate glass at the required positions and we have made uh the required trenches and after that we are going to clean the wafer right after that we are going to clean the wafer again with the help of argon sputtering cleaning and we we are going to then sputter the titanium right so here you can see we have the titanium and then we are going to sputter the titanium nitride as well with the help of the cvd of the titanium nitride we can again deposit the titanium nitride and then we can do the titanium nitride treatment and then you can see we have the cvd of the tungsten right so you can see we have the cvd of the tungsten when we have the titanium nitride layer present as the connection or the addition layer right so after that we can deposit the tungsten tungsten is having very less addition capability with the given uh, chip and with the trenches it cannot be adhesive so we can use the titanium nitride for an addition layer right so we can do the cvd of the tungsten you can see here after that these are the rough surfaces which we can remove with the help of chemical metallical polishing after the chemical metallical polishing we are using the chemical metallical polishing of the titanium and the titanium nitride layer you can see this is how we we are having the output structure which is a very smooth structure and after that we can do the wafer cleaning so this is how we can form the local interconnection so you can see this is the mask for the formation of the local interconnection so all of the steps are shown here first of all we are having stripping off or the photoresist clean you can see we have formed the trenches over here after that we are having the photoresist clean first of all we are going to do the pvd of the titanium or the titanium nitride and cvd of the titanium nitride or the tungsten so here we will be having the titanium nitride addition or the barrier layer and after that we will be having the titanium nitride or the tungsten which is deposited here so this is a tungsten but you can see the rough surface over here which can be 
स्मूदन आउट विद द हेल्प ऑफ द सी एम पी ऑफ द टंगस्टन एज वेल एज टाइटेनियम नाइट्राइड और द टाइटेनियम सो यू कैन सी वी हैव रिमूव द टाइटेनियम नाइट्राइड लेयर फ्रॉम हेयर दिस पोजिशन विद द हेल्प ऑफ द सी एम पी वी कैन कैलकुलेट द एंड पॉइंट ऑल्सो एंड विद द हेल्प ऑफ द एंड पॉइंट वी कैन स्टॉप एट द पर्टिकुलर लोकेशन सो नाउ कमिंग टू द अर्ली ग्लोबल इंटरकनेक्शन ग्लोबल इंटरकनेक्शन आर द इंटरकनेक्शन विच आर कनेक्टिंग अ लॉट ऑफ ट्रांजिस्टर सो वी कैन यूज ऑक्साइड केमिकल पेपर डेपोजिशन आफ्टर दैट वी कैन यूज फोटोलिथोग्राफी ऑक्साइड एचिंग एंड द फोटो रजिस्ट्रिप आफ्टर दैट वी कैन डू द मेटल फिजिकल पेपर डेपोजिशन आफ्टर दैट अगेन फोटोलिथोग्राफी मेटल एचिंग एंड द पी आर स्ट्रिप this is how we we can have the oxide etching which forms the contact or the wire holes and the metal etching forms the interconnection lines so you can see early aluminium interconnections look like this so you can see first of all we are doing the cvd of the psg this is how we have the psg layer over here and after that we will be having the psg reflow for the smoothing out of the phosphosilicate glass we will be reflowing it at a higher temperature after that we will be doing the wafer cleaning and then we will be making the contact hole mask after that we are going to etch out the phosphosilicate glass at the particular lo location and this is how we are forming the trenches after that we are going to strip of the photo resist you can see here in this figure the stripped of photo resist is looking like this after that we are going to clean the wafer to remove the contaminant particles then i am going to deposit the aluminium silicon alloy you can see here we have the aluminium silicon alloy then we are going to use the metal interconnection mask and we are going to remove the metal at the particular location where we don't want to short out the transistor so now after that we are going to etch out the metals and then we are going to strip out the photo resist and this is the output which is looking like after that we can do the metal annealing for the single crystal type of structure formation so now coming to the multi level interconnection so earlier interconnection had a rough surface so with the help of rough surface there was a problem with the photolithography and the metal uh, physical vapor deposition because the photolithography requires the photo resist to be present evenly but if i have a rough surface it would be difficult to have the photo resist present evenly we can use the tungsten to fill narrow contact and the wire holes and the basic interconnection process steps are the dielectric cvd and the planarization is done first after that we can do the photolithography oxide etch and the photo resist stripping after that we can do the tungsten cvd at the stripped out places and then i can remove the bulk tungsten which is formed above it so after that we can use the metal stacked physical vapor deposition again photolithography oxide etch and the photo resist stripping so you can see after that we can use the phosphosilicate glass or the borophosphosilicate glass for the pmd and usg for imd layer interconnection so here i can use the dielectric cmp for planarization right so we have an even structure we can use again and again cmp whenever i need the planarization tungsten cmp is used to remove the bulk tungsten right tungsten can be deposited in, in the bulk manner but we want to remove it we can use a chemical metallical polishing we can have the metal stack that is titanium welding layer aluminium copper alloy and the titanium nitride arc as well so metal etching defines the metal interconnection line so now you can see this is how p e t e o s u s g deposition then etch out then deposition and the cmp after deposition etching out deposition and the chemical metallical polishing this is how my u s g structure is looking like and you can see this is a very smooth planar structure right so after all of the uh, tungsten aluminium copper alloy and the usg deposition after that we can have a very smooth layer this is what we want after that we can have the wire etching or etching out for the undoped silicate glass as well so you can see here i had done the wire etching and then we can fill it with the tungsten cvd and after that we can remove out the bulk tungsten with the help of cmp process after that you can see we can uh, do the wire etching and then we can etch out the usg layer as well and this is the metal h2 so this is how you can see we are using the second interconnection layer which is the aluminium copper alloy again so i hope you understood what is the metal interconnection what what is the multi level interconnection right what is local interconnection what is global interconnection in this video if you have still any doubt you can refer these books for your further studies or you can put the doubt in the comment i hope you like this session if you like it please push the like button subscribe to the channel give me your feedback share it with your friends thank you so much